In problem 22, we have a fault uh, <clears throat> deep direction and dip, and we have a slip vector azimuth. So these two elements are enough to obtain the focal mechanisms on a fault that had uh, experience of the movement, right? So we're going to find the focal mechanism and we're going to place the PTN axis on the focal mechanisms. All right, let's go. Uh, look at the statement and see how we can do this. In problem 22, we have the orientation of the fault and also we have the slip vector. And these two elements are enough that we can provide the uh, focal mechanism solution. Let's see how we can do that. First of all, you need to plot the fault. Our fault has a deep direction of 170. So the fault is dipping that direction and the dip angle is 80 degrees. So the fault is like that, facing towards 170 and is dipping 80, right? So I signed 170, I placed 170 along east-west line, I count 80 degrees and I trace the great circle that is representing my fault. All right, next I need to show the slip vector. The slip vector has an azimuth of 146. So, which means uh, you place the stereo net uh, at its original stage and then take the ruler and um, put a sign for one, 146. So, I need to, f to count first. This is 90 degrees, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 146. Okay, this is 146. And <clears throat> this is the slip vector, right? I can put a sign right here. And if you want to show uh, a slip vector, you can actually place a small arrow like that, that is facing towards 146. So we have the fault, we have the slip vector. So next, you need to uh, find the pole of the fault. And we're gonna use the pole of the fault and the slip vector to uh, create a one great circle. And then from there, we can uh, start working on the axis that the question is asking for. So let's place the fault uh, along one great circle and I'm going to show the pole of the fault, right? And uh, next, we need to place these two dots along one great circle. So you can move your uh, vellum paper in any direction you want and try to fit these two dots along one great circle so it's about five degrees i think <clears throat> that would be uh that would be good for uh, this example so i'm gonna put a dash line here because this is not quite important plane that i will use later on so i'm gonna put a dash line here And uh, because the slip vector is sitting along the plane, we're gonna call this one as a movement plane. The slip vector, sigma one, sigma three, pole of the fault, these four elements are always are on the movement plane. So um, that's one thing. And the other important point is the pole of the movement plane, because it includes the sigma 1 and sigma 3, for sure it's going to be sigma 2, right? So if I find the pole of this dash line, all right, which is actually you can count 90 degrees to that direction, or you can right away highlight the intersection of the fault and east-west line, which is sitting here, right? That's going to be the sigma two, all right? So I'm gonna name the sigma two, 
and um, we know that the sigma 1 and sigma 3 is going to be plotted along this dashed line and if you want to find those two you need to count 45 degrees uh, from the slip vector <clears throat> or from the pole it doesn't matter to both directions right the easy one is a slip vector and uh, I'm gonna count 45 degrees to both directions and then put a sign there 10 20 30 40 45 okay I'm gonna put a three um, I'm gonna put a rectangle here and 10 20 30 40 45 I'm gonna put a triangle here okay so one of them is sigma 1 and the other one is sigma 3 so you need to do the educated guess here right and we know this is the fault this is the slip vector that it's moving that direction which means this fault is a normal fault and on the normal fault setting the axis that it's close to the center has to be sigma 1 because based on the definition if sigma 1 is perpendicular to the earth's surface in that case we're gonna have a normal fault so one axis is here the other one is here which one is closer to the center you can place it along the east west or north south line and you can count the angle this is about 45 degrees but the triangle it's sitting far away a little bit 10 20 30 40 50 55 so because this is closer I'm gonna call this one Sigma 1 and this one Sigma 3 all right we almost have all the elements um, for drawing the focal mechanism we need two planes one is the fault plane that we have the solid line here and the second one is the auxiliary plane which is perpendicular to the fault plane and the auxiliary plane actually can be obtained using the pole of the fault and sigma 2 so if you place these two along one great circle uh, that's going to be the axillary plane so i'm going to move it like the one here okay and i should be able to draw the solid line because i'm going to use this and that is my axillary plane for this example All right so I can name it this is fault and this is axillary plane so because the fault is normal fault right we need to show the uh, compression and dilation zone normally dilation zone is uh, left empty or white and the compression zone should be colored so as we know the area that sigma 3 or actually t right is located that's gonna go with the compressed uh, zone so sigma 3 is t sigma 1 is p and sigma 2 is n right it's just the simplified or generalized names so i know the t axis has to be inside the compressed zone in that case i'm gonna i'm gonna color uh, this segment I'm gonna leave this empty, leave this one empty, and then color this portion as well. All right, we have the focal mechanisms. We have uh, we have the three P, T, and N axes, and the question is asking about the attitude of the sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 what you can do is just place your ruler and get the trend of each axis, right? so we need to read the trend and plunge of 
these three axes. So uh, sigma one is uh, it's about three hundred fifty seven and the, this is the trend and the plunge is we count it right it's 45 already we did that 45 uh, sigma 3 is this is 180 170 165 and the plunge is 10, 20, 30, 35. You can actually count along the east-west line. That's the same. And the sigma 2 is, this is 270, 260, 259. And the plunge is about 3 degrees. So we have the trend and the plunge of three main principal axes, right? Sigma 1, 2, and 3, or pressure, null, and tensile uh, force axis. All right, so we are done with problem 20.